Hey there guys, I'm Danks564 and this is continuation of our let's play of This is the Police and we just awoken from our coma and we have our midlife crisis, so new car! Yes! And uh, let's just continue on. Oh, stripes, okay. Who do I want to give it to? Um, let's... How about we make Vandal Super Cup on par with, uh, what's her name, Kochi? There you go, Vandal. You're our sup second Super Cup. Oh, <laughs> interesting. Now we have cassettes instead of... Is it the same music, though? Maybe, I don't know. Call request. Additional detective. Good. Um, oh, and additional officer as well. Hmm. In just a second. So we need a, a detective for shift A, I'm thinking. And you'll do fine. Hire a detective. And apparently we have a, a space for uh, an officer. And we need an officer for shift B. You look like awesome officer. Shift B. Okay. Martin Stead. Jack, while you were in the hospital, a hunt was declared on all cops. It's like all the criminals in the city suddenly went savage. They, they're coming for officers one by one and beating them to death. Our boys have started refusing to ride out on calls alone. When the situation is really bad, even two will refuse to go. Hmm, interesting. Uh, what's our share? Oh, for an automatic weapon? Uh, sure, let's share it. Well, we're at 50k. And, um, what do we want? Um, maybe SWAT upgrade? No, oh, that's sure. Let's ask for SWAT upgrade. What do I have here? A passerby saw three teenagers uh, setting fire to a parked car. According to the eyewitnesses, you can still catch them there just walking down the street, not even hurry. Mm, and I'll take the new guy and make sure everything's good. Oh, interesting. Uh, investigations, where is it? Detectives. Well, unfortunately, all of you will have to get off this case while you go. Okay, and you guys will have to get into the... Oh, 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 wait, wait, wait. It's a shift A, right. And he's at home, god damn it. It was it was a month while I was in a coma and you haven't like uncovered any anything here, really? Can we send the guy that is at home? No, nope, we can't. Okay. Security guard noticed a suspicious group of teenagers hiding things under their jacket and as they walked past the check checkout. Um, when he asked them to stop, the teenagers scattered in all directions and ran out of the store into the parking lot. The guard called the police and says they couldn't have gotten far. Mm -hmm. yeah, guy and you go check it out. I want to send someone in here, but god damn it, I need I need that guy that's at home right now, I need him to be here. I understand I like just hired him, but come on. Can't you like get to work today or something? Reckless endangerment identified woman says that the strange surgeon is operating without a license from the basement of her house. Hardly looks like a real doctor. He's old, maybe senile and always seems drunk. Well, 
Vandal, a new guy. Why don't you get the God Bomber with you? You know, great name, God Bomber. So, theft, everything's fine, good. Maybe, like, he'll be able to, op like, break the case open or something. I don't know. But come on, damn it, guys. I need I need a breakthrough here right now on those three cases. That's getting ridiculous. Uh, a student couldn't get into his room. He was locked from the inside, and he heard muffled cries coming from within. It sounded like someone was raping my girlfriend. Well, then. Uh, Brock... And why don't you take Chang? Um, don't want to send anybody else. I think we're good. Okay, just go. Got a situation here. In a dirty basement, a teenage old, uh, teetering old man is digging around inside a young man's ripped open stomach. Call an ambulance. Good. Okay, guys returned. So, investigation, come on. It will probably get maybe something during the. Just a false alarm. Like, how do you even come to that conclusion? Like, come on. Homicide. A nurse reported that she saw an elderly woman cut off her husband's life support system after a car accident left him in a coma for a month. I know his case, case was hopeless, but it's still a murder and uh, the, the greatest sin of all. According to the nurse, the woman has blocked off the entrance to the ward. Well, it shouldn't be that hard, so... Actually, you know what? How about... You look, guys, you look like twins. You just have different, well, maybe a little different. But still, probably brothers, so, oh. And both of your names are f start on A, so, uh, last names. Cousins. Sounds good to me. Your cousins. Probably it's all because they wear glasses. <laughs> well, the shape of the, like, face is pretty sa similar, so... Wouldn't be too assault with an offensive weapon. A trucker just called in. He says a van stopped on the side of the road, and three large men got out of the with the shovels. Then someone fell to the ground out of the back of the van. I think they had it uh, had his hands tied up. They hit him in the head with one of the shovels and led him into the woods. Well, crap! That's a lot of stuff. Um, let's send something like this, um, and you three, okay, SWAT, sure, go. Homicide, okay, caught nobody unharmed, good. So, what did they do with that guy? Did they already kill him, or did they not kill him. The question is. The van is empty, but the engine is still warm. The area is silent and dark. Enter the fort. Try not to make any noise. I think that's the best idea. Good. Because if we would wait him for him, he would be dead, right? Jewelry robbery. Eyewitness reports that five armed men burst into a jewelry store, a series of gunshot followed, then a few minutes later a girl starting uh, staggered out of the store, bleeding from her stomach. She fell to the pavement unconscious. How about we wait for this what? I don't think we have time to wait for this what? God damn it. Well, let's send everybody without this what then. And how that everybody will be alright, right? Okay, that's the... Okay, no frames, robbery, no frames, of course. And theft, no frames. Really? 
So apparently we have everything, right? Or if hmm. So he takes the bag from the thing and then goes and does the thing. But come on. Like is it something like this? No. I'm pretty sure it's a doctor, but We definitely don't have all the frames, because it just doesn't paint any picture. We need to see him, like, open the, the thing, right? Or something. Maybe with a key or something. And the other investigation about the robbery. We, we have some of it. But again, not all. There's definitely something missing. Because he took the, th the stuff before he went out, I I'm assuming. Then he dropped some money to the guy to, like, put some suspiciousness on the bomb, right? And then maybe, like, if we put it here, no. I'm pretty sure that's how it went. And then something, he... Maybe he's leaving or something with the bag, but we definitely don't have enough stuff. So this case will just gonna have to. No, no. no. Oh, the situation is more serious. Okay. Well, Vandal, so you and you go. No. I'm pretty sure that's the last case of the day, so might as well send as many as we can. Yeah, yeah, I know. But it's just... is it is it my luck that all the detective uh, cases are on this specific uh, shift? Or is it, like, deliberate design? Fender Scott. Oh, and we found some jewelry. Yes, ask my fit to sell it, please. And thank you. And the shift. Impressive recovery, Mr. Boyd. I'm still not happy about how soon you're back to work. Well, not happy as your doctor. As a resident of Freeburg, I'm immensely grateful for it. Really? <laughs> Just don't tell anyone, or they'll pull my license. Well, thank you again for coming to see me at night. Oh, well, whatever you need, Mr. Boyd. Any doctor in this town would come running any hour, day or night, you can believe me. You're not suffering from headaches. It says here that you are taking painkillers after a back injury. But the prescribed dose is enough to... Uh... Dr. Krachinsky, you trust me? And, uh, sorry? Do you trust me? In what way, Mr. Boyd? You think I'm an honest and reasonable man, Doctor? You are joking, Mr. Boyd. Thanks to you, my wife finally agreed to buy a house here, and we decided to have children. Thanks to you, I'm not afraid to visit my patients at night. I think you are the most honest and reasonable person in the city, Mr. Boyd. Great. You see, Dr. Krachinsky, uh, I'm an addict. Mr. Boyd... Is, uh, is well, not a drug addict in the way you might imagine. I'm not some weak-willed junkie. Sometimes I stay clean so long that the tablets stay locked in the barn so long they go past the expiration date. But there are less pleasant stories. You know what? Let's... I once took a whole bottle right there in the barn, passed out my own vomit. I almost choked. I fought the convulsions, somehow managed to break four ribs, for two weeks, my chest was so sore, I wanted to die. But for those two weeks, I kept swallowing pills. Couldn't stop. If you want, I could... Uh... I once took a dose right before a party at home. My wife, Laura, had some old friends over from college. And I didn't take that many, maybe five or six pills, but it felt like I'd taken a few hundred. 
I passed out while I was carrying a tray of drinks. On the way down, I knocked over a set of Laura's scented candles. The house almost burned down. The repairs took a good chunk from our savings. Mr. Boyd, if you'll allow me, I just... Uh... As you can see, Doctor, I'm well aware of the seriousness of the situation and the possible consequences. But sometimes I need the pills. I don't use the word lightly. Sometimes I've got to work on cases with more energy than I've got. I can't do it without them. And I know you want me doing my job. So tomorrow, I want you to come here and bring me some tablets. Lots of tablets. Ten bottles. No, no, better fifteen. Yeah, fifteen bottles. The next three months are gonna be extremely difficult, Doc. I would like to discuss your... Um... You'll bring the pills, Doctor? <laughs> uh, yes, Mr. Boyd. Yes. Very good. Look, I don't want to trouble you any further. I bet your family doesn't like you running away with me at night. I bet they'd rather I was still in that coma. <laughs> yeah, we are quite intimidating, if we, if we want to be, I guess. Uh, rumor. Jan Paulson, next Freebird police chief. Ken Paulson preparing to take Helm at F FPD. Mayor Rogers supports Kevin Paulson as the next police chief. I trust my uh, I trust my family. Well, what do you know? <coughs> Robert Paulson, right? In in uh, Fight Club, his name was Robert Paulson. Yeah, I think so. Okay, start the day. Wait a sec, yeah, there. SWAT upgrade, okay. Uh, let's increase their efficiency, I guess. Why not? Not sure. Let's take everything. What the hell? Get to. Two teenagers were getting on some steps uh, and smoking. A black man approached and asked for a cigarette. Go ask some, somebody else, monkey. The adolescent responded, the man grew enraged, quickly pulled out a knife and drove it into the chest two of one of the teens. According to the other teenager who managed to escape, then he took a cigarette, quietly sat down on the steps and started smoking. Well. Actually, you know what? Let's send the, the B team. That should be more than enough. Plus Percy get, will get to 200. Look at you, Percy. Finally made a actual cop out of you. A rape. Morris Quinn heard from the neighbor a neighboring apartment a panicked female voice, help, I'm being raped. Then, according to him, all was quiet for a few seconds. Then I heard something about laundry deterrent and bleach, and then some music started playing. Well, that sounds serious. So, Hutchinson, Kochi, I think that you should do should be enough. Holy crap, that's a uh, thunderstorm out there. Homicide. Yep, thunder caught, officers unharmed, and what do we have here? An assault. Electrician Jason Pewitt was conducting regular inspection at the Transformer substation. Found a dirty, hairy bum who pounced on him like a wild bear. Uh, the homeless man beat him pretty sev severely, ripping a piece of flesh from his hand. The electrician was stunned, but managed to run away from the uh, substation, leaving the, the suspect inside. So we got a zombie attack. Pretty Yancy, go. Shoot him in the head. Rape. Turns out Mr. Queen neighbors had just brought a new TV and were watching some horror movies at full volume. Oh, of course they were. Two teenagers were laying in wait for some paramedics to go for their 
usual coffee, and then they made off with their ambulance. We literally turned away for less than a minute. Anybody is coming home, like, right now? Yeah, you guys. So, Percy and Davis, I think you should be more than enough. See, you're, you're loading your own patrols now. Jason Pugh has lost uh, consciousness and he's shaking and conv convulsing on the ground. There's foam coming out of his mouth. Jason Pugh, it's an electrician. Yeah, see, we have zombie apocalypse right now on our hands. <laughs> Call exorcist, yes. Uh, keep his head elevated and his airway cleared. Homeless man is still hiding in the Transformers uh, structure. The entrance is smeared with blood. Open the door and order the men to exit the substation. Good. Hopefully we shot him in the head before he bit anybody else. Uh, it's clean as day in Freiburg, which uh, will be wildly covered by TV and media. Three employees from all city services, including the police, should come out to help and clean up. Who would we send? Well, why don't you, you and uh, Song, I guess. His, they were, well, or, or they're all overqualified for this job, but we don't have any other choice, I guess. Car checking. Oh, okay, good job. Good job, Percy. See, I, I think if we'll drop more promotions on Percy, he'll stop trying to, like, leave the job. And it will be more, uh, more of a good cop. And, Good for him. We just we need him not to get killed. That's all. Massive fight. About a dozen homeless people were sitting th through a landfill for uh, s sifting through a landfill for valuables, and come across a case with a combination lock. While they were deciding how to split the contacts, the group began to fight. A few of them have knives. An eyewitness called the police and reported uh, that some of them seem ready for a fight to the death. Okay. Hoshi, Prudim, Rada, Yancy. Thank you, will be enough, and we'll send in a paddy wagon. Yeah, okay. And these guys will be here just in case, because these guys are f occupied for quite a long while cleaning. I think they'll be occupied for the rest of the day, right? But you all are very, very experienced, so... I mean, come on. How's that investigation of that homicide? No, yeah, good. Public indecency, indecency exotic dancer Marisa Gomez complained about a strange man in raincoat. One of, the, of our rooms can be seen from the street, it's so we can attract customers. Customers, not perverts. This isn't the first time we chase this guy away. He comes all the time wearing raincoat, no matter what the weather. And it seems like he's touching himself. Well, that's exactly why we have Percy for. Okay, this guy's returning. Perfect. And perfect timing. Attempted car checking, residential area. A woman called in, complained about a car alarm. This fucking howling woke me up. I've got to get to work for tomorrow. I looked out the window and saw a dark figure ducking the, into the alley. I think there's someone trying to steal a car. Uh, Yancy Murata, check it out. Public indecency. A man is standing outside the window, pressing his nose against the glass and touching her herself under the coat. A man touching herself. Interesting. Grab the man by his arm and throw himself into the him into patrol car. Good. And yeah, these guys, where, where did they go in? I forgot. Anyways, we've got 
a fight. The bouncer at nightclub refused entrance to five lowlifes, hinting that flip flops, uh, hinting that flip flop and swan pants will chase off uh, the woman. Lowlifes got angry and decided to teach their the bounce, bouncer some manners. A fight ensued. Um, let's send these three, just to give them experience. Kochka can can hold the fort for now. Attempted car checking. No one's trying to steal cars. The vehicle security system is too sensitive and reacts to even slightest noise. Oh, great. And homicide. Okay, I think that's him leaving the the scene, right? Something like this. He walks in. Hmm. Maybe it was out that thing. Maybe like he calls in, he walks in, they argue. He something like this, no? Like that? Maybe like that? It seems to me like it should be somewhere right here. Something like this. Is that she at the door or is it... I don't know. It's supposed to be done. Somehow. Somehow I feel that we just need to place them properly. Well, that's for sure. He's getting out. He's like had an argument with her, right? And he's now getting out. That's they them arguing. And that's him getting in, right? Yeah, that's the same door, I think. So he gets in. Kid opens the door. The grown-ups argue. He walks out. Kid grabs a hammer and kills his mother. That seems like what happened to me. Can be without this one, but like something like this. I don't know. Okay, we'll get back to it. Even though I'm pretty well, without the main guy, we still cannot, right? Cannot send uh, the force to get him. Good. And end of the day. Oh, all right, the pills. Mr. Boyd, I'm going home. Uh, do you need anything? Oh, no, no, don't go. I need to talk to you. I won't keep you long. I just need to make one phone call and I'll be right out, okay? Of course, Mr. Boyd. <sighs> Do you know what time it is? I didn't mean, uh, well, maybe I did. Guess I'm a son of a bitch. <laughs> Jack? Good lord, Jack, I wanted to talk to you. Was wondering if you'd call. How do you feel? I'm good, Mrs. Markham. Better than ever. The back pain is gone, the insomnia is gone, my hair is growing back. 
and my pathological indecisiveness seems to have run off somewhere. Jack, if you think I had anything to do with that... I'll waste no more time trying to think, Mrs. Markham. Every second counts. There's a lot to do. And one of those things is finding Laura. Jack, your tone is scaring me. Good. Turns out I have a knack for that. Scaring people. So, Mrs. Markham, I'm gonna look for my wife, and if you somehow get in my way, I'll send a special squad to your house. Holy... First they'll throw your dog in the fire, then they'll arrest you for prostitution. What? What the... Prostitution? <laughs> Sometimes it's necessary to invent charges. It's not like I can arrest you for being an unbearable bitch. Yeah, they call Emma, change him. I need a detective. Oh, of course, Mr. Boyd. What shift? No, 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 not one of ours. A private detective. Oh. Um... I know that when your father stole your mother's jewelry and left her, you hired a private investigator. You didn't go to the police. Uh, you know, Mr. Boyd, it was a family problem, and we felt that it would... I understand perfectly, Emma. You don't need to explain anything. I'm in a similar situation. As you might have heard, my wife left the house. She's missing, you could say. Uh, I'm not sure what you're... I know you've heard all about it. I want her found, but I don't want the department involved. Same reason you didn't. So I decided to hire your private detective. Think you can arrange it? Oh, of course, Mr. Boyd. I'll call him and arrange everything. And don't worry, he'll keep it a secret. Fine. Uh, what do you need from me? Well, just gather all the information that might be useful and put it in an envelope, bring it to me, and I'll take it to him. Good. Okay, take the day off tomorrow and get a good night's sleep. The day after tomorrow, I'll have that envelope for you. Okay. Crocodile found in the inner city river. Farmers, farmer claims government poisoned harvest. Projection X accidentally plays porn at the last picture show. Yes, accidentally. Okay, guys, I think I'll make a cut here and we'll continue in the next episode. Thank you for watching. Hopefully, you enjoyed it. And goodbye.